Good morning. Are you blessed today? Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's the Lord's day. Praise God. And uh, the weather now is uh, getting nice. Right? And soon we'll be wearing our, uh, you know, our jackets, our high heels, boots, uh, I mean boots. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. If you have your Bible, uh, turn with me to Romans 8.28. Uh, I know this is the favorite verse of uh, most of us, most Christians. So we're going to talk about this uh, today. I'm reading from the NIV Bible, Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, and your mercy upon us, O oh God. It's only by your grace, O oh God, that we are here today, O oh God. And uh, we pray, O oh God, as we study your word, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you give us wisdom, give us anointing, O oh God, to listen, to understand your word, and uh, help us as well to apply the principles, Lord, that we learn today, O oh God, unto our lives, O oh God. And Father, uh, also, Lord God, I pray, O oh God, that uh, you anoint me, O oh God. Anoint me, Lord, to preach your word, O oh God. Hallelujah. So that, Lord, I could preach your word with boldness, O oh God. And uh, yes, Lord, thank you very much. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And the title of our message for today is Intended for, for Bad, God Turned into Good. Intended for Bad, God Turned into Good. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. Well, in uh, this verse, Romans 8, 28, it declares that God works for our good in all things. It says there, in all things. And of course, uh, this is very encouraging. This is very reassuring. And uh, here, here's uh, the meaning of uh, Romans 8.28, or here's what Romans 8.28 really means. Okay? In Romans 8.28, this verse does not mean that we can live our lives in any way we choose. And if uh, things don't go well, uh, we expect that God will fix our mess, right? That, that's not what uh, Romans 8.28 uh, means. We cannot uh, just live our lives the way we want to, and then when we are in a bad situation, the consequences of uh, you know what we do, our wrong choices, and then we, we expect that God will uh, fix uh, the, you know, the mess or the the bad uh, consequences. Another one is we cannot just quote the the part of uh, Romans in eight twenty eight the way we like. Just like uh, I used to hear uh, some Christians, they say, and we know that in all things God works for the good, and then they stop. In all things, uh, some are also saying, in all things, God works for good, and then they stop there. But you know, we cannot skip the, the rest of uh, the verse. Uh, the, the rest of the verse are qualifiers. Okay? And it says there, of those who love him. So that's one qualifier in there. Of those who love him. God works for the good of those who love him. The question is, do you love God? How much do you love God? Right? And then another qualifier there is uh, who have been called according to his purpose. Do you know God's purpose for you? We, we need to know uh, the purpose of God for, uh, for each one of us because God has a great plan and purpose for each one of us. So Romans 8.28 refers to those who love God and are doing their best to obey him, to do his will. And who are aligned with his purpose. Because God has a plan and purpose for each one of us. 
And also Romans 8.28 is a promise for real believers, not for all people, for believers who had truly received Christ as their Lord and Savior. Right? Those who are living in Christ, obeying his commands, obeying his word, his will. Okay? And, uh, of course, uh, all of us, I do believe that all of us had experienced uh, some uh, negative circumstances, situations that uh, we don't want to happen, right? And, uh, of course, uh, all these uh, unwanted situations and circumstances come into our lives, right? That will make us, instead of moving forward, we step backward or we step back, right? These are setbacks. And these setbacks can stop us from uh, moving forward, uh, from, uh, you know, they, they stop us from fulfilling God's plan and purpose for, for our lives, right? Hallelujah. And uh, I do believe that God has, you know, a God-given assignment for each one of us. Right? God has called us for his purpose and for his glory. But, you know, these uh, unwanted circumstances, uh, negative situations, including COVID-19, you know, will cause us to, to stop or to, to step back or backward uh, instead of moving forward, uh, instead of fulfilling God's plan and purpose for for our lives so once again just remember god has a great plan and purpose for each one of us do you agree amen hallelujah praise god and you know talking about this uh, covid19 uh, uh, pandemic there are effects there are negative effects of this covid19 in the lives of christians Born again Christians, there are effects. Well, do you know the effects of this uh, COVID-19 to to Christians, to born again Christians? I do believe that uh, you have some answers. I do believe that you have, uh, you know, uh, also observe the negative effects of this uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, we 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 are not doing now the things that we used to do, right? In the in, in in the secular and even in in the church, right? And uh, also because of uh, this COVID nineteen, there are plenty of Christians who have grown cold in their personal relationship with the Lord. That's why we now have plenty of lukewarm Christians, not only here in the U.S. I do believe it's everywhere. We have this uh, uh, every other week meeting with uh, Bishop Oriel, and he's, uh, he's, he's mentioning that uh, th this is the problem also of uh, pastors and churches over there in the Philippines. Uh, much more over there because they are locked down. And they, they cannot, you know, people cannot go to church. So they don't have a service. And they do their online service like what we do. We have our virtual uh, service or online uh, live stream service. But over there in the Philippines, they, they have uh, uh, not good uh, internet uh, connection, and it's quite expensive also over there, right? Hallelujah. And also, Satan is using this COVID uh, pandemic to lure Christians away from the Lord, right? In uh, John chapter 10, verse uh, it says there the thief only or the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy right Satan comes to destroy our personal relationship with the Lord Satan comes to destroy and steal uh, you know our God-given assignments or uh, it will stop us from uh, uh, fulfilling our God-given assignments so Satan uses this uh, situation, this COVID uh, pandemic situation, to stop us from uh, having our, our dreams being fulfilled, 
uh, to stop us from fulfilling our God-given assignment, our calling. There, there are even some pastors who have grown cold in their, in their uh, Christian life, in their relationship with the Lord. And also, Satan is uh, instilling fear on Christians. Right? There are so many Christians who are scared to come to church. They are scared to, to come to church. And uh, what is the antidote for fear? Faith, right? It's the opposite of fear. Faith is the op opposite of fear. So we need, we need to, you know, we need to uh, grow in our faith, uh, stronger in our faith in the Lord. And how can, we, how can we strengthen our faith in the Lord? Right? How do you, how do you, how do you uh, uh, increase your faith? in the Lord. I, I'll give you three. Number one is spend quality time with the Lord. So decide to spend quality time with the Lord on a daily basis, not on a weekly or a monthly basis or when you want to do it, but rather on a daily basis. And also decide to spend quality time with the Word of God on a daily basis also. Joshua 1, 8, day and night, says there, meditate on God's word day and night. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, New King James Version Bible, it says there, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we, as we continue to study God's word, as we continue to listen to God's word, we grow in our faith in the Lord. Right? And there's no other way to grow in faith, but to spend quality time with God, to spend quality time with the Word of, of God on a daily basis, and also decide to spend quality time with your fellow believers, right? And how do you spend quality time with your fellow believers? In the cell group, in the life group, right? And. Uh, if you look back to the early Christians, they did all of this. They spend quality time with God. They spend quality time with the Word of God. They spend uh, quality time with their fellow believers through fellowship. In Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 42, it says there, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. We should, we should uh, be doing this also, right? With or without COVID, we should be doing this because this is the key to our spiritual growth and uh, maturity. We need each other to build up one another, to encourage one another, especially during this time of this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, so don't isolate yourself. Uh, have you heard about that story of the, the firewood? The fire, you know, the wood. If you, if you know, if you if you observe, all the wood are on fire. But try to remove one piece of wood with the fire. Try to remove it from the the rest of the group of uh, firewood. Eventually, the the fire on that wood will be uh, extinguished. The same thing with our with our uh, spiritual lives. If we you know, if we isolate ourselves from, from our fellow believers, from our brothers and sisters in fellowship, if we isolate ourselves, we will grow cold in our faith in the Lord. We'll grow weak in our faith in the Lord. Right? Especially when we, when we uh, hear a lot of uh, uh, negative news, when we look at uh, Facebook and a lot of uh, negative, uh, uh, yeah, uh, negative reports are there and uh, negative uh, whatever you call it uh, uh, what what are those stories <laughs> fake news right uh, you you will be discouraged right but rather we should encourage one another we should fellowship with one another and we have life groups we have cell groups where we can we, where we can study God's word where we can pray together and where we can, we can uh, encourage, build up one another, right? Hallelujah. The problem is some Christians, they also fellowship, 
but they just want to eat and have fun. Right? No word of God. That's, that's, uh, that's a problem of uh, some Christians. And also some Christians, they even skip uh, church on Sundays to have fun. Sundays, Sunday is the Lord's day, brothers and sisters. Sunday is the Lord's day. Uh, this su Sunday is like our Sabbath day. Uh, a day of worship, a day of rest. This is the day of the Lord. Uh, you can go on vacation. You can go uh, somewhere with your family, but never, never skip your worship unto the Lord. Right? Hallelujah. When, when my family goes somewhere and uh, wherever we go, we, we have already scheduled, we have already decided where to go on that Sunday, what to do on that Sunday. And then after... After uh, the service, after you know going to church or attending church online, then we have fun somewhere. We eat somewhere. Right? Hallelujah. So if we want to grow in our faith in the Lord, if we want to be strengthened in our faith in the Lord, we know the principles. Spend quality time with God. On a daily basis, spend quality time with the Word of God, uh, day and night, and then spend quality time also with your fellow believers in the life group, in the cell group. Amen. Hallelujah. So we will use uh, uh, as an example uh, the life of uh, Joseph, so we can we can apply uh, Romans eight twenty eight through the life of uh, Joseph. You know Joseph, Joseph the dreamer, is one of the sons of uh, Jacob. Okay? So we will learn uh, from his life, his situations that uh, he, have, he had gone through and how he ended up uh, victorious and uh, triumphant. The, the bad things, the bad stuff that happened to him, God turned into good ones. Amen. So even even us, even us, uh, we can apply some principles also when we face some challenges, some trials in life, and even this uh, the effects of this COVID nineteen. Okay. Hallelujah. So the story of Joseph is found in Genesis chapter 50, verses 18 to 21. Actually, when you have time, read your Bible, starting from Genesis uh, chapter uh, 30 up to Genesis of, uh, chapter 50. Uh, praise God, the Bible had uh, allocated several chapters in the book of Genesis uh, about the life of uh, Joseph. Okay? So in Genesis uh, chapter 50, 18 to 21, in IV, his brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Do not, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them, and he spoke kindly to them. This was uh, the later part of uh, the story of Joseph, where, where uh, he revealed himself to his uh, brothers, who sold him to uh, Egypt as a slave. And uh, when their father, uh, Jacob, or Israel, died, passed away, uh, his brothers were scared because of what they had done to him. Uh, they, 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 they were thinking that, you know, uh, Joseph might uh, take revenge. So that's why they, they came to him and they bowed down to him. And they said, we are your slaves. Make us your slaves. Right? But look what uh, Joseph said. Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me. 
but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Hallelujah. So when you have your time, uh, spare time, read Genesis chapter 30 up to 50 so you could understand the, 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 the full uh, context of the story uh, of uh, the life of uh, Joseph. And uh, also his brothers and what happened uh, to Joseph in Egypt. So uh, to give you a, a, an overview of uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph's life, uh, Joseph, as a teenager, he was uh, so overconfident of himself. He had self-confidence. He had his uh, uh, dreams also. And uh, he, he was also uh, the favorite son of uh, his father, uh, Jacob. So favoritism sometimes, or, you know, is always uh, not good, right? Favoritism. Uh, especially parents. Well, for Sister Minchi, yeah, she has no choice. There's only one. <laughs> right? Hallelujah. And also, Joseph was a dreamer and he had uh, big dreams. You, you could also read in there if you, you know, read uh, uh, those chapters in uh, the book of Genesis. And uh, to make the story short, because of, uh, you know, uh, the dreams of Joseph and because uh, Joseph was a favorite son of Jacob and uh, so on and so forth, uh, his brothers hated him. So his brothers conspired to kill him. But they changed their mind. They, you know, they just decided to throw him into a pit. And then when they saw this caravan of, uh, of Egyptians, they decided to sell their brother to the Egyptians. So Joseph became a slave. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, Joseph had uh, gone through other uh, obstacles and uh, negative situations in life. So he ended up being a slave in Egypt and he was, you know, God was with him. So uh, he was a slave of uh, Potiphar God blessed uh, Potiphar because of, of uh, Joseph. So everything that, that Joseph uh, touches, everything that Joseph uh, did, God blessed him. And of course, since God blessed uh, Joseph, you know, the blessings was actually going into his master, Potiphar. Right? Hallelujah. And... Uh, you know, uh, he was uh, his, you know, his uh, master's uh, wife. Uh, there's no name mentioned in the Bible. Uh, the the wife of uh, Potiphar uh, wanted to, you know, wanted to to have uh, uh, she seduced uh, Joseph. She wanted to uh, sleep with uh, or stay in bed with Joseph. But Joseph, uh, you know, did, did not uh, do it because he feared God. And he said, uh, you know, my, my master had uh, taken me in charge of everything except you because you are, you are the wife of my master. How can I do such uh, a wicked thing, which is uh, sin against my master and against God? So Joseph ran away, but... Uh, Potiphar's wife was able to grab the, the, the jacket or the clock of uh, Joseph. And then when, when Potiphar arrived home, uh, Potiphar's wife uh, told him, hey, you, you're, you're, you're a slave, that, Egy that Hebrew slave. Uh, he, he, he attacked me, he tried to, to rape me, and so on and so forth. In short, uh, Potiphar put Joseph into jail. So he, he, he was imprisoned, uh, and then, uh, you know, of course, uh, in prison, God was with him also. Jos uh, God was with Joseph also. So God prospered him also uh, while he was in jail. 
Okay, so so uh, in short, uh, Joseph was you know blessed by God because of his faith in God, because he loved God. Amen. Hallelujah. Joseph survived all these hardships where many of us may may have failed, right? May have you know quit already, but Joseph survive all these uh, obstacles and these challenges of of life and in fact he he was uh, successful in everywhere he 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 went or he, he, he went to or you know whether he was a slave whether he was in prison he he you know god was with him god was uh, blessing him so here are some uh, here are some uh, of the hardships that uh, Joseph had experienced, and maybe we can we can also uh, relate ourselves to some of them or to one of them, right? Number one, he was betrayed and deserted by his brothers. You can see that in Genesis chapter thirty-seven. He was, uh, you know, the, his brothers attempted to kill him, and then eventually they they sold him as a slave. And then he was exposed to sexual temptation, Genesis 39. And then he was punished for doing what was right, also in Genesis 39. He, he ran away from Potiphar's wife, but still he was, uh, he was, you know, he was imprisoned for doing what was right. He was forgotten by those whom he helped in Genesis chapter 40, verse 23, where he had helped. Uh, uh, interpret the dreams of uh, two slaves who were imprisoned. And one of them was hanged, one of them was restored to his uh, position. But, you know, Joseph, Joseph uh, you know, told this uh, servant uh, that when he goes back to his, uh, his position in the palace, Joseph said, please remember me, please don't forget me. But he was forgotten by this, uh, this guy, this slave that was restored. And of course, he endured a long imprisonment. He was imprisoned for several years, right? So as you read the story, as we read the story of uh, Joseph, we can note that he always responded positively. In every circumstance, in every situation, in every obstacle that had come his his way, and uh, his response was always to to uh, you know to overcome the setbacks and just move forward. He transformed his setbacks into breakthroughs. Right, Hallelujah. Where he could have uh, a step backward, he moved forward. He just faced the challenges. Okay? He faced the challenges. He moved on. He did not spend time asking God, why, why God, why, why did you allow this to happen? But rather his approach was, what shall I do now? And he decided to do what was right. He decided to remain faithful unto God. He started to, uh, he, he remained uh, doing what was right in the eyes of God. Amen. So we can learn here from Joseph a simple truth. The presence of God in his life made him overcome all the obstacles that came to him. The same thing with us, brothers and sisters. If God is in us, if God is with us, we can overcome every obstacle that come our way. Amen. And even the, the king of Peru, he took notice about, about uh, Joseph. When he said uh, in Genesis chapter 41 verse 38, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the spirit of God is. The, the, the Pharaoh noticed that the spirit of God 
God was with Joseph, right? Because only only someone who has the Spirit of God could could interpret the dreams of Pharaoh and could uh, give him, you know, a wise advice on what to do to save lives. So Pharaoh acknowledged, you know, uh, Joseph that God was with him. The Spirit of God was with him. So learn from Joseph. Let us learn from Joseph. He allowed his faith and trust in God to guide him and direct him even in the midst of unwanted circumstances, obstacles, trials, temptations. Amen? Hallelujah. So when the circumstances of his life seemed to, to be going away from his dreams, not towards it, because he had uh, dreams, big dreams. When, when, you know, when the circumstances were falling away from fulfilling his dreams, he just trusted in God. Okay? He still had faith in God. He did not waver in his faith and trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the enemy might meant it for our harm, but praise God, God can use it for something good. Just like what he did in the life of Joseph. And once again, God has a plan, a great plan and purpose for our lives. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you, a plan to give you a hope and a future. That's what uh, God says. Not only to the Hebrews, not only to the Israelites, but to all those who love him. Amen. Because God's in intentions are only for the good of uh, his children. So whatever setback, whatever uh, trials and uh, obstacles that come our way, just don't forget God is with you. Amen? God is there to help you. But you have to remain faithful unto the Lord. Hang on to him. Hold on to him. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> so Joseph's uh, setbacks, his negative circumstances, all those obstacles could not force him out of the plan of God for his life. He knew the plan of God for his life. And, uh, of course, his response and his faith in the Lord uh, affected also his victory, his success, and his destiny. And uh, you could see in the life of uh, Joseph that eventually he became the second you know, most powerful man in Egypt next to Pharaoh. And he was a slave. And then he became the next in line to Pharaoh, the, most, the second most powerful man in, in Egypt during that time. So here are some principles that we could uh, learn from the life of Joseph in relation to Romans 8.28. That in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, those whom God had called according to his purpose. So here are some principles. Number one, our response matters more than our circumstances. The problem is our response. Amen? It's not the circumstance, but our response. Well, in, in world view, you know, the, the, in, in this world, people will say, it's dead end. You know what's dead end? Have you seen those, those markings uh, on the streets? Dead end. Okay, dead end. That means... You, you will end up in a cul-de-sac. You'll not be going uh, somewhere. You just, just, you know, up to that point. Just like in the place of uh, Sister Lisa, right? You're, you're, you have your dead end over there. So if you think that you're going to the other side, no. There's, there's, there's no other way. So you'll be going back and find another way. 
So when, when, when people are saying, yeah, you're now dead, you're now in the dead end, you know, don't be alarmed, don't be upset, but rather stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord to take place, just like what happened to Joseph. Well, Joseph was in that pit. He was sold as a slave. Then he was in prison. He could have quit. He could have, uh, he could have been depressed or he, ha he could have, uh, you know, given up hope. But no, Joseph stood firm and he was able to see the deliverance of the Lord taking place in his life. But, you know, if uh, Joseph just quit and did nothing or just uh, did the trust in the Lord, nothing could have happened, nothing good could have happened to Joseph. But he stood firm and he was able to see the deliverance of the Lord. And that which was intended to stop God's plan in his life eventually became a victory for him. Hallelujah. So also in our lives, when the world and circumstances say dead end, failure, etc., just remember Joseph. Stand firm and respond well face you know the obstacles face the challenges with god's help you can make it amen we can make it hallelujah praise god so don't give up joseph did not give up he should not give up also because god is with us hallelujah now uh, we should uh, we should uh, be like joseph when he said you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Well, brothers and sisters, God's plan and purpose is to save lives. I know we have all uh, big dreams and goals in lives, but there's, a one, there's one mandate from, from God. There's one command from the Lord that we should be doing our great commission right we should go and preach the good news we should go and make disciples why because God's plan and purpose is to save lives not just to save uh, lives just like uh, what uh, happened to Joseph's uh, uh, brothers father and uh, their whole clan but God's plan and purpose for each one of us, brothers and sisters, with or without COVID, His plan and purpose is to save many lives from going into that destruction in hell, into that lake of fire. So we have a mandate to do. God has a plan and purpose for each one of us to go and share the good news to our loved ones, to our relatives, and to our friends. There's so many people dying because of this COVID. Brother Rick or Koya Rick got sick for five days. Then he passed away. And then there are sayings also. Uh, I think you have uh, read those sayings. Uh, you were happy. You were happy yesterday and today. Tomorrow you are in Garapon. Uh, in the battle right garapon means jar or the the ur, uh, what's that the urn right so what shall we do you know especially our loved ones who have not who have not known the lord jesus yet who have not received who have not accepted the lord jesus christ as their lord and savior Without Jesus Christ, they will, not, they will not enter heaven. Without having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, they will not enter heaven. They will not spend their eternity in heaven. They will spend their eternity in that lake of fire. Not all people will uh, go to heaven. You know, uh, believers, non-believers, uh, when they die, you, you could hear some people saying, 
Oh, he is now in a better place. How do they know that he is now in a better place? I only know that that person, when he dies, <coughs> he is now in a better place when he had received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior during his lifetime. Right? And he remained faithful unto the Lord. He obeyed the commands of the Lord. Right? Hallelujah. So what shall we do? We should uh, go and reach out to our loved ones, to our friends, to our relatives. Share the good news to them. Amen? So that they will, they will not go into that lake of fire. Of course, uh, Satan will, you know, will, uh, will uh, block us, will uh, stop us from doing or from fulfilling our, our uh, God-given uh, assignment, our mandate from the Lord, which is to go and reach out to people and share the good news. <coughs> but, you know, we have our choice. We have our option. We should desire, we should decide to move on and do the will of God for us. For the saving of uh, many lives. Amen? So COVID-19 pandemic is not the problem. Our response to the situation is the problem. How, how we respond to any situation, to COVID-19, to any obstacle, right, matters most. Okay, because God wants us to step forward and not to step backward. We need to move forward. Hallelujah. So our response matters more than our circumstances. Number two, with God all things are possible to those who believe. Do you believe that? All things are possible with God and to those who believe. Hallelujah. So, talking about the life of uh, Joseph, he was, he was in that uh, dungeon. Oh, he was in that pit. He was a slave. He was uh, thrown into prison. Right. Hallelujah. Maybe uh, some of us could be thinking like, "Oh, my dreams are gone," or maybe you're saying, "Oh, my." You know, I'm dreaming an impossible dream. There's a song like that, right? To dream the impossible dream, right? But Joseph did not did not think of uh, such a uh, way, right? He had his dream, and he trusted in God that God will make his dreams come true. He stood firm. Hallelujah. Because he believed, he knew that God has a great plan and purpose for him. So if we believe also and if we know that God has a great plan and purpose for each one of us, you know, that will help us also be encouraged, be strengthened to stand firm in our faith in the Lord. Just keep on trusting in the Lord. Amen. You know what? Apostle Paul dreamed of going to Rome. To bring the good news to Rome. To bring, to preach the gospel in Rome. But he ended up in that dungeon having chained with uh, those guards 24-7. Right? You know, those guards, of course, they have shift. Every eight hours, they, they change uh, guards. So he was chained with these uh, guards. Right? Hallelujah. What did the... Uh, what did, uh, uh, Apostle Paul do you know his dream was to go and preach the good news to the Romans but he ended up in that dungeon chained with that uh, with those uh, guards Roman guards what did he do well to Apostle Paul you know he 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 know he he knew his uh, you know his uh, purpose in life so what do you think he will do you know, with, with those guards chained to him, I don't think uh, Apostle Paul will be talking about COVID-19, about football. He'll be talking about, uh, about uh, the gospel. So, so the guards chained to him cannot do anything but to listen to him, right? So whatever circumstances uh, Apostle Paul had, 
He used it to accomplish God's purpose, God's plan for his life. The same thing with us. You know, wherever the Lord sends us, whatever the Lord uh, tells us to do, we should uh, obey God. We should, uh, you know, we should uh, accomplish what God has uh, planned and purpose for our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. So, for Apostle Paul, he evangelized those guards. He did not sit back or he did not step backward. He moved forward. He did something by preaching the good news to those guards. Hallelujah. After all, those guards cannot do anything. They cannot run away. They cannot even close their ears. Right? Hallelujah. And then Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. Was it a setback or an opportunity? Well, Paul and Silas, you, you can read that in Acts chapter 16. You know, <clears throat> the devil thought that it was a setback for Apostle Paul and Silas because they were thrown into prison. But in Acts chapter 16, you could uh, see in there that in the middle of the night, Paul and Silas were worshiping God, singing praise and worship songs unto God. Then there was an earthquake. And then to make the story short, the, the jailer and his whole family ended up receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So it was an opportunity for Apostle Paul and uh, Silas, right, to, to, to share the good news to the jailer and to the family of the jailer. Praise God. Hallelujah. So whenever or wherever you find yourselves, in some negative uh, circumstances or obstacles, just remember that God is in control. Amen? And your dreams are also in God's hands. So don't, don't be scared, don't, don't uh, quit, but rather stand firm in your faith in the Lord. No, don't step backward, but rather step forward, just like uh, Joseph. He had this forward, forward-looking attitude. Never, never quit. Hallelujah. He didn't allow his uh, negative circumstances to drive him back. But rather, he just remained steadfast. He stood firm in his trust in the Lord, in his faith in the Lord. Well. Talking about uh, the impossible, the Lord Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, uh, part B, He said, everything is possible for one who believes. Uh, everything is possible to those who believe, brothers and sisters. We believe in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. Everything is possible to those who believe. Amen. So with God, all things are possible to those who believe. And the third one, with God's help, we will end up victorious and successful. With God's help, nothing is impossible. We will end up victorious and uh, successful. Amen. So the key here is with God's help. Don't, don't face your circumstances, your negative circumstances. Don't face your obstacles just by yourself. Involve God. Amen. Ask God to help you. Pray. Pray for guidance. Pray for wisdom. Pray for strength. And the Lord will, will uh, be with you. Amen. And uh, learn from Joseph. Joseph was not a quitter. Because quitters step backward. I don't like uh, to associate myself with quitters. Don't associate with quitters. Amen. We're not quitters. Amen. Hallelujah. If God is telling us to do something, we don't quit. We don't step backward. But rather, we will, we will do what God is telling us to do. And also, Joseph was not a negative person. I don't like to associate myself with a, a negative people also. Because they contaminate. They, they are, you know, they will contaminate you if 
you know they are they are very contagious negative people are very contagious you know those people uh, the the person struck with covid still alive they say oh, he's dead he's still alive right still hope but they say he's dead don't don't associate yourself with those kind of people negative uh, people amen they are very contagious <clears throat> but look joseph was a man full of god's spirit even the the pharaoh recognized it spirit filled christians are not negative people spirit filled christians they don't step backward they move forward associate yourselves with spirit filled christians and you will grow strong in your faith also you will become an overcomer also amen hallelujah praise god and also joseph never doubted god never doubted the uh, god's way he trusted in god all the way amen when uh, when everything or things uh, seem like there's no more way god has a way of course god will make a way amen because nothing is too difficult for god nothing is impossible with god well sometimes we have detours in life just like what happened to uh, to uh, joseph he had uh, the detour he he was in that pit he was in uh, he was a, a slave then he was in that prison those those were detours but god you know made something right god uh, did something and made joseph end up into the second most powerful man in egypt next to pharaoh so with god we, you know with god nothing is impossible with god's help we will end up victorious and successful just like uh, joseph just like what happened to to joseph and sometimes uh, god's way may sometimes be you know we, we don't understand but just remember that you know god knows everything god knows what is best and god is in control amen i i do believe that all of you have uh, experiences have uh, have uh, some testimonies i i happen to have uh, as part of my uh, testimony about that uh, eight months without work and during that eight months without work uh, i had the opportunity uh, for an interview so i was interviewed at the department of social services for a position and uh, uh, i was not taken in for that uh, position uh, the vice president said oh you did well in that interview but unfortunately they were looking for a person who has a solid experience on this thing and you didn't have the other guy had it was it uh, a setback of course and uh, you know for eight months i didn't have a job and then here comes uh, you know after two months here comes another another uh, opportunity the same the same office the 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 first uh, the first offer of course was you know was taken and then here comes uh, another opportunity at the same office but another obstacle was uh, the the vice president of our agency uh, she told me well there's an, another opportunity but this is quite a high position if you did not make it on the the lower position how could you make it on this uh, higher position i said what what position is that a systems analyst uh, position i said that's my work that's that's what i've been doing for so many years why why don't you put my 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 resume and uh, we'll see uh, you know I, I i could have told her and we'll see what the lord will do but uh, <laughs> and uh, i had to convince her to put my my uh, my resume and uh, she was saying but the problem is you know as a systems analyst we have uh, another concern what was another concern uh, they, they, they might not understand you what 
I'll be, I'll be talking in English, and they will not understand me. If they don't understand me, I'll read it. I, I will write it down. Okay? I will write it down. I, I will use other terminologies so they could understand me. Just put on, just uh, submit my resume, and we'll see what happens. And praise God, uh, you know, the, the vice president uh, submitted my, my resume, and I was called in for an interview. It was a panel interview by, by technical people, technical managers. And I was there. So they grilled me with uh, some questions. And praise God, uh, you know, everything went well. I should have prayed, just like my other, my first interview here in Richmond. I should have prayed, Lord, if this is the job that you have, uh, you know, prepared for me, no more interviews. But I did not pray that same prayer. So I had this interview, and one of the interviewers who became my manager was there, and he said, I know you, Mario. I, I was in that first interview, so I will not be asking you any questions. I, I'm just here just to see how these uh, people uh, will uh, treat you and uh, will ask you questions. So, Praise God. To make the story short, I got the job. So, see how, how God works? I did not get that lower position, but I got. God had prepared for me that, that uh, higher position. <laughs> what did Pastor Renan tell me? <laughs> so praise God. Hallelujah. God works for good to those who love him, to those who have been called according to his purpose. So brothers and sisters, if there are obstacles, don't worry. Just pray. Just trust in the Lord. Just keep uh, trusting in the Lord. And just keep doing what God is telling you to do. And God will bless you. God will do the rest. Amen. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So don't, don't uh, shrink back. Don't step backward. Amen. But rather move forward. Do what God is telling you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, so as a church, we have to move forward also. God has given us uh, a purpose. God has given our church a vision and purpose, a mission to fulfill. We need to, we need to fulfill what God has, has given to us as a church. Amen. God has given us a conquest uh, mission. That means to share the good news to all people. We should do it. And we have some tools that we are using. We have the prayer of three. We have the harvest event. We have the soy nail. Let's do it. And once again, just remember those three principles that we have learned. Amen. Our, our response matters most, matters more than our circumstances. Another one is, with God, all things are possible to those who believe. And the third one, with God's help, we will end up victorious and successful. Amen? So, praise God. Let's all stand up. Hallelujah. And also, always remember that God's will, God's plan, God's purpose is to save people from that lake of fire, that everlasting lake of fire. Amen? Hallelujah. And if God had saved uh, the family of Joseph, through Joseph, God will save people also through us, through our church. Amen? When we go and share the good news to people. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, O God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, we thank you, O God, for your message, O God, that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for using the life of uh, Joseph, O God, in order for us to understand, O God, that uh, uh, in all things, O God, you work for the good of those who love you, of those whom you have called according to your purpose, O God. 
And uh, yes, Lord, uh, thank you very much, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, that you just continue, Lord, to help us, O oh God. Help us, Lord, to be encouraged, to be, O oh God, enlightened, O oh God. And also, Lord God, to decide, Lord, to spend more time with you, O oh God. Quality time with you, quality time with your word, and quality time with our fellow believers, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, O oh God, thank you very much, O oh God, for all my brothers and my sisters. Thank you, Lord, for your great plan and purposes for our lives. And uh, yes, O oh God, even those who have joined us online, thank you very much, O oh God, for your plans and your purposes, O oh God, upon our lives, O oh God, upon all of us, O oh God. And also, Lord, thank you very much for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your protection upon us. We apply the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ upon each one of us, upon every family represented here in the sanctuary and those who have joined us online. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. To God be the glory.